My name is Mary Finelli. I'm the founder and president of Fish Feel. It's the first organization devoted to promoting respect and compassion for fishes as sentient beings. I went vegetarian when I was 15. I, I'd always loved animals and didn't want to hurt them. I didn't really know any vegetarians, and so I wasn't sure I could do it. But I read a biography of Mahatma Gandhi when I was 15, and I uh, figured if he could do it, I would do it. So. I, and it was very easy, actually, when I became vegetarian. And I was vegetarian for about 10 years, and then I got involved in animal rights, and it was just a natural progression to become vegan. So I went vegan in about, uh, it was about 1986. I actually moved down to Washington, D.C. to work with animal rights organizations. And uh, there was a, a community of vegans here, and so it was really quite easy to become vegan, a lot of um, camaraderie. And veganism was beginning to be, become popular, so there were products that were geared specifically to vegan. Not very many, but you know enough to get by. So it was really a great time to to get into the the movement. And then since then, it has really just blossomed. There's vegan versions now, of virtually anything you can imagine. I became vegan because I realized that by not being vegan, we were causing a lot of needless harm to animals, and and I didn't want to contribute to that, and also for environmental reasons. Um, and, and also for health reasons. I look around and I see a lot of people who are overweight and have all kinds of health problems and it seems like a relentless um, litany of commercials for, for drugs on TV with all these horrendous side effects. And I have continued to enjoy excellent health through, for the last few decades. And I'm, I'm just so grateful that you know, I'm not getting um, all the cholesterol and saturated fat and all the bioaccumulated toxins that come with animal products. It's a very clean way to eat. I've been a vegan for the past 35 years and I really don't, it's hard to imagine, I really don't know how different I would have been had I not been vegan. But I, I know I've gone to my class reunions and I've seen my classmates. I actually thought I walked into the wrong reunion. I thought I went into like my brother's reunion, people who were like 10 years older. People just looked so haggard, really, at, and I know a lot of my classmates have passed away already. I, I can't help but think it's uh, diet plays a major role in that. I'm vegan for animals, essentially. I don't want to cause needless harm to animals, so being vegan is a huge way you can not contribute to the cruelty, the needless cruelty that, that is happening to countless animals in the world every day. Um, it also is a great way to uh, help the environment because your, you know, animal product production is so harmful not only to the animals, not solely to the animals, but also to the environment. It, it uses immense amounts of resources. It also causes immense amounts of pollution to land, water, and air. So those are two great reasons, and also for your health. Being vegan is a better way to live, a health, more healthful way than, than eating animal products. So it really just makes sense all around. I think everybody who possibly can be vegan should be vegan. And really, being vegan means not causing needless harm to others. So there's no perfect vegans. We're all vegan to the extent that is practically possible. So really, anybody can be vegan. And everybody should be vegan, because why would you want to cause needless harm to others? Um, another thing that why it's good to be vegan is because it does tend to be a much more healthful way. So you're not contributing to the immense amount of health care costs, which raises health care costs for everybody. A lot of people, when they stop eating other animals, turn instead to birds and fish. And really, by doing that, um, you're causing more animals to be killed. It takes so many more chickens, for example, to make the amount of meat as you can get from a cow. And with fish, when they're catching fish, they're also catching so many other animals with them, considered bycatch, who are then thrown back dead or dying. So you're really causing so many more animals to be killed. And for farmed fish, so many of the wild-caught fish are caught to feed farmed fish and pigs and chickens. In addition to not wanting to cause animals harm, for your own health, uh, fish is like probably the worst thing you can eat. It has high amounts of mercury, um, dioxins, DDT, PCBs, all these toxic chemicals bioaccumulate in animal tissues. So people are ingesting, people who eat them are ingesting concentrated doses of all these harmful products. And now also microplastics are being found in fish flesh. Not only are they um, ingesting the plastic, but also goes through their 
their gills so and embeds in the fish tissue. So you're also eating plastic and parasites. Um, there's just so many problems with eating fish that you can easily avoid and still get the same textures and flavors by eating vegan seafood. There's no good reason, there's no valid reason to believe that fish feel pain any less than any animals. We have a preponderance of scientific evidence showing that they do. So they deserve as much respect and compassion as any other sentient beings. For example, there's ex experiments where they've injected fish with a mild acid in their lips and the fish respond in a way that indicates that they're suffering pain from it. For example, they, they rub their mouths on the gravel and uh, they'll go into like hiding, they, they won't eat, and they just act in a way that indicates that they are in pain. Fish actually also produce their own endorphins, painkillers. When they are exposed to painkillers, they behave in a way that indicates that their pain has been alleviated. And also they quickly learn to avoid painful stimuli. So all the evidence shows what any um, rational person should intuitively realize that fish are sentient beings who feel fear and pain. Well, I spend a lot of my time online, doing online uh, social activism. And so I encounter a lot of people who are negative towards veganism or, or questioning it. Uh, you know, I try not to be negative, I try not to criticize them, but just present to them the reasons why being vegan is a good thing all around. You really can't force them to do anything. You're just presenting them with the information and urging them to do the right thing, which is to be vegan. I mean, I do also go to animal rights events and pro-vegan events and, and leaflet. And, and uh, well, with our organization, we do a lot of tabling and that includes um, information on how to go vegan, how to be vegan. So a lot of public outreach. It's, Animal rights has been happening for the, really um, a, a movement for the last uh, 40 years or so. And there was, there was so much resistance to it before, but in the, the past couple of decades, it's really gained respect, social respect. People in the public have realized that, you know, animals are being harmed needlessly and they, they relate to mammals and they are increasingly relating to birds. But up until the past few couple of years, really, there's so much doubt even that, that fish are sentient beings, even that fish are animals. And the law um, excludes fish under a lot of animal protection legislation, which is why we began Fish Feel, why we started Fish Feel, to try to educate the public on that fish are sentient beings. And there's so much scientific evidence now that fish are sentient, that they do feel fear and pain and lots of other um, emotions. When I became vegan, uh, I was basically, I had moved to Washington DC to work for animal rights. So there was a community of vegans here. So it was, it was very accepting and that's great to have the camaraderie, but my family was not vegetarian or, or vegan. Fortunately, my family for the most part was very accepting. And we actually had, when we had family events, they were vegan events, people were willing to do that. And some of my family actually did go vegetarian. Some actually did go vegan. So I've had a really good experience with it. What I find challenging is, is the public attitude, you know, just there's so much ignorance and so much denial. You know, you get all kinds of silly comments like, you know, what about plants feeling? And it's great if people care about plants, mostly that's not, mostly it's just, just to deflect. Even if you do believe that plants feel pain, you're causing fewer plants to die on a vegan diet. There's really no good excuse not to be vegan. What I find challenging about being vegan is really public um, resistance and ignorance about it. Really my only re regret, which is probably the regret of every vegan, is that I wasn't vegan earlier. Well, the, you know, there's so much misinformation out there and, and intentionally so. I think of course the meat industry wants people to keep anim eating animal products. And even the government is so in bed really with industry. Well, you figure the USDA, they have the dual mission, the dual conflicting mission of regulating and promoting agriculture. So they really want people to eat animals and there, there's so much money invested in it. And people are so misled to think that they actually really need to eat animals. It's really sad. I mean, people should know what their nutritional needs are. It's like you're having your own you know, manual for your own body. Um, and if people just realized how easy it is to be vegan and how much better it is to be vegan, 
I think a lot of people would switch, but people just are so ingrained in their habits and so resistant to change, which is really sad because it's for their own best interest if they would change. I think if you go into veganism for the right reason, for the, out of really compassion, a matter of compassion, it, it's so hard to, to turn your back on that. And it's very hard to decide that you're going to go back to needlessly harming animals just for taste, matter of taste or whatever. I think a lot of people find themselves alone as a vegan and it's very hard. It can be very hard with social pressure. And if you're living like out in the hinterland or something, you know, it might not be that easy to find vegan, certain vegan products, whatever. But, you know, I know people who are living in the hinterlands and such, and, and they're making do. You, you think that people back in the 1940s, when veganism first started, they made do. So really anybody essentially can make do with, with what's available and, and live a very happy, healthy life as a vegan. The best thing to do is try to eat greens. Make that the basis of your diet and then build your meals around that. So greens and grains and beans, um, which is also very simple and you can make very easy, simple meals that way, which is what I do, very simple foods and very inexpensive foods. Um, and I usually steam things that retains the most nutrients. And then my favorite food of all is watermelon, so I love that. I like to make smoothies, that's a real treat. And um, popcorn, sweet potatoes are wonderful, steamed sweet potatoes. And once in a while we'll make like a tofurkey or something for a, a special treat. But basically, um, I like to eat very simple, delicious foods and you can put on seasoning, spices and such to give them flavors. I like soy sauce, you can use seaweed that gives foods a, a very nice flavor. It's not complicated to be a vegan. You can have a very simple diet and be a vegan. There is so much help now to help people transition to being vegan. Um, online and off and, and free. But people are so willing and wanting to help people become vegan. There's vegan mentoring services. Um, and really, you know, it's not that difficult. I, I became vegan without any outside help. It was, it was a very easy transition, really. But when I find someone who's interested in becoming vegan, I like to refer them to the Vegetarian Resource Group, which actually is, promotes veganism over vegetarianism. But they have a wonderful website with just so much information, and it's you know all nutritionally based, and they have scientific advisors and everything. So it's really a wonderful resource. www.vrg, vegetarian resource group, .org. When I became vegan, then we'd have family gatherings. So just to, uh, I requested that they be vegan and my family was very um, agreeable for the most part. And a number of my family members did eventually become vegetarian or vegan. Um, I think they probably got the idea from that. You know, it was actually my siblings were somewhat resistant and I, I really pretty much thought it was hopeless for a while, but it was really their kids, nieces and my nieces and nephews who had a lot of interest in it. And when they came to visit, we took some of them over to Poplar Spring Animal Sanctuary. And, you know, it's wonderful to take a child or an adult to a, an animal sanctuary where people can really show you the animals and tell you what, what they had been subjected to and now what wonderful lives they lead. You know, how personable these animals are and how interesting and how wonderful. And why would you want to harm them when you don't need to? I have no intention whatsoever to ever eat animals again or animal products. I find it grotesque and ghoulish to eat animals' remains, especially animals who have been killed intentionally for you to eat them. It's just, to me, it's really no different than eating human remains. Um, I certainly hope I never need to go back to eating them. I can't imagine I'd have to be absolutely starving to even consider it. And uh, hopefully that will never be the case. There is, are so many fantastic resources online. Really, all you need to do is Google. If you're interested in nutrition, and if you're concerned about expense, you can just Google budget vegan, and there's so many resources there. There are wonderful videos. I really especially like one by a group called Gaia's Eye, and it shows all these athletes who are vegan. And you know, when people say you'll be weak or you can't have, be strong enough, here, here are all these world-class athletes who are training on a vegan diet. There's a new documentary called uh, The Dark Hobby about how cruel and environmentally reckless the industry is that collects fish from the wild. 
for aquariums. And also uh, captive breeding is also has a lot of animal suffering involved in it. So for people who are interested in keeping fish and can provide a good home for them, we recommend that they adopt them from an animal shelter or a rescue group. Or if you go on Craigslist or people who need to find a new home for their fish, you know, there's other ways you can um, obtain fish without supporting this very cruel industry. A new movie out, the documentary Sea Spiracy, which has, shows how harmful the fishing industry is. And there's a book, What a Fish Knows, that tells how interesting and admirable and amazing fishes are. On our website, we also have a section on vegan seafood. There are vegan versions now of virtually any kind of seafood, really any kind of food you can imagine. Um, we have recipes and links to companies that make vegan products. There are vegan seafood cookbooks. So anything you have a hankering for, there's a, a vegan version. On the Fishfield website, we have information about fish, facts, sheets, videos, and um, recommended readings. You can find out more about fish and how you can go about helping them, some, some of the many problems that they face, and how you can be uh, an advocate for fish and ideally an activist for fish. On our website, we have a page called Your Page where people tell us how a lot of people have fished and realized how cruel and wrong it is and they've explained how they've come to realize and, and respect and appreciate fish. We're always looking for more stories, so if you'd like to share with us how you um, have come to respect fish or uh, appreciate them, um, please send it to us. We're at info at fishfield.org, and also there's plenty of videos there and um, fact sheets, and we have a kid's page, coloring books and such, puzzles and everything where kids can um, also learn more about fish. Uh, we also have a very dynamic Facebook page and every day we're posting news and information about fish and videos and interesting tidbits that show how amazing and, and admirable and personable fishes are.